So you just upgraded your license. Should you get a vanity call sign? Portable tuners and digital interfaces for your ham radio. And why would a Yesu radio mysteriously shut off this time on Mailbag Monday? Thanks for tuning in, everyone. You are watching KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. We got three great questions for you, really, kind of four. Uh, so let's dive right in. This first question this viewer writes in and says, Mike, thanks for all your videos. I have truly learned a lot and was recently inspired to test for general a few weeks ago and passed extra this past Monday. Congratulations. Now, I'm faced with the decision whether to keep my current call sign KN4ITA or get a shortened vanity call now that I'm an extra. Is the shortened call worth it? Thanks. Well, <laughs> I suppose that depends on how much you hate your current call sign. Uh, it's not a bad call sign as far as uh, CW weight. It's actually uh, a little bit easier to, to key out. Not that I'm a CW expert, but uh, it is a bit easier of one. Uh, I changed my call sign pretty early. K8 MRD is obviously a vanity call sign. MRD is my initials and K8 is just, I'm from 8 land and I was originally KE8 EPF. Horrible call sign. I hated it. So I changed it uh, while I was still a technician, probably, oh gosh, within a, within a month or two of, of getting my license, I suspect. So, um, I mean, it's always nicer to have a, a shorter call sign. Mine's only shorter by one letter, but that's still one letter. As an extra, uh, we have the option to get either a two by two, a one by two. I mean, you can you can kind of get whatever the heck you want. Uh, the 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 challenge comes when you want a one by two. Those are um, few and far between. I, I I've not personally applied for one. I don't care to have one. I like my call sign, uh, but I know that some people who have applied for like a, a one by two. Uh, you're going to have a list of call signs that you can request from the FCC and uh, you may or may not get them because the one by two is pretty popular. So um, you, you might go with a, a one by three or a two by two. Um, but, you know, you, you get to pick whatever, sort of whatever you want. You know, it, if if you haven't been a, a ham for a very long time and you're you're thinking about changing it, I would say do it now and just get it over with. Guys that have been hams for a really long time, it can be uh, and not so much of a challenge, but a thing where it's like, man, I've had this call, call sign for so long, everybody knows me as whatever, now I'm gonna change it, and then they're gonna, everybody's gonna have to learn my new call sign and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I, I certainly uh, would would promote the, the uh, the usage get get a vanity call sign if, if you don't like what the FCC is just giving you out of the random pool. But uh, your call sign is not bad by any means. Not it's, it's not like KE8 EPF. Good lord. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, if you're gonna do it, do it now while you're while you're still kind of early in it. And uh, you know, may, maybe you get a two by one or a one by two, um, something shorter. It's you know from from someone who uh, is is an active activator for Parks on the Air. Um, it, it makes it easier when you only have four uh, characters to get the whole call sign, especially when the bands are bad. So it's not a bad thing. So uh, yeah, guys, leave your comments. What do you think? Should he should he get a vanity call sign, or or what are what are your thoughts on vanity call signs? Thanks for writing in, though. I appreciate it. Next, we've got a great question about uh, some tuners and some digital interfaces. This viewer is writing, Hi, Mike. Thanks for the great videos. I am living in my RV full-time and running uh, an FT891, both in the RV and for POTA. So you're literally living in a van down by the river. That's awesome. <laughs> Can you recommend a tuner for the 891 with uh, all the MFJ and MAT tuners available? Not sure which one would be good for both places. Also, I want to learn FT8 and wonder your thoughts on the Yesu SCU interface versus DigiRig or something better. Thanks for your help and put on. So my first question to you would be, why do you even want a tuner? Uh, you could just get a resonant antenna. Now I do understand if you're living in a van down by the river, it could be difficult to get a lot of room for uh, even 66 feet for an NFET half wave. So like a 41 foot vertical nine to one, I could see, uh, I could see being a good compromise. So. 
to go down that route with with what I have experience with, and given that you're in an RV, so you want this to be in your RV and POTA, would lead me to believe we want something a little bit smaller. So uh, the first one that I will tell you that I absolutely love is this MFJ 939. Now, if you get this one, get the 939Y. Y meaning Yesu means you'll get a cable to plug into the back of this that will plug into your Yesu and your 891 will power this and you just hit the tune button and everything just works. It does it automatically. A fantastic tuner. There's not many things I've uh, hooked up to this that it hasn't been able to tune. I think they go for, uh, let's head over to the internet machine here and let's see, how many monies are these? Uh, 199.95. So it's a, it's a 200 watt auto tuner. Uh, this one's for the icon, but get the 993Y. See, this is 993I. I just clicked on one, and you'll get the cable with the uh, for the Yesu. So, absolutely fantastic uh, uh, tuner. I I did a video on this uh, years ago um, with the Pack 10, I believe. I'll put a link here, and you can take a look at it. But either that or uh, kind of in the same ballpark, the LDG Z100A automatic tuner. 200 bucks at gigaparts. Uh, I don't have uh, I don't have an affiliate link for LDG. I don't think, um, but you can go to uh, go to gigaparts and type in K at MRD. It might do something. Uh, but uh, LDG is another fantastic tuner manufacturer. I have used this tuner. I don't own it, but I have used it. And you literally just push that tune button, and it keys up and does all the things that it needs to do. And the benefit of these is that they're small. Okay, this is this is approximately this is a little bit smaller than your 891 okay so very lightweight you can take it with you it's got your uh, so239s it's got a ground on there uh, if you're using the radio to control this the radio will power this so you don't need to have another uh, there is a DC jack there so you can hook a battery up to this 12 volt battery um, but you don't need to if, if the uh, radio is powering it so either one of those would be my uh, suggestion now the second part of your question was, uh, you want to learn about FT8. I did a video on getting started with FT8 that'll be somewhere up there. I'll put a link, uh, a card there. Uh, so the Yesu SCU interface, I'm not familiar with, but apparently it looks like this. It's $198 for a digital interface, and uh, we can't really embiggen it, but uh, so you've got a, a receive and a transmit uh, a volume knob there, and uh, that's what you get. 200 bucks, that's that's a little steep if you ask me for a digital interface. I've not used that, I didn't know about it until I read your email. I own uh, a signal link, this was the first USB adapter that I bought, this was back in the day, this was like 100 bucks, they're about 135 bucks now, but the signal link is a fantastic sound card. Uh, it'll work with all brands of radios, there is, you might need to uh, open this up, there's just a little jumper in here, that you'll swap out the pins. It's literally you just pull some some little jumper off and put it back on different pins to make it go from like ICOM to Yesu to Kenwood. That's how it works. But very very simple to set up. Um, you've got a USB that's going to go from the computer to the signal link, and then you've got uh, whatever this DIN thing is from the radio to the signal link. There is one other cable that's going to go from the uh, from the USB of the 891 to the USB of your computer. So there are three cables uh, for this, but nice thing about this, it's got, a, it's got a power button there, okay? And it also has the receive and transmit uh, knobs there, which can actually be quite useful uh, if, if your receive audio is maybe too hot or too uh, soft, you can adjust that with the receive in WSJTX. If it's, if it's too hot, it's not gonna de decode right. If it's too uh, uh, too quiet, it's not gonna decode right either. It kind of needs to be just right. And then you also have uh, a little delay knob there. So these go for 140 bucks right now on uh, Gigaparts website. So you've already, uh, you're already 60 bucks cheaper than that Yesu one. And then the other one is, which I, I love both of these, I honestly do. But that's the digi rig. Look at how tiny this thing is. I mean, it's tiny, 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 tiny. Uh, these go for about 50 bucks. Uh, if you go to the digi rig website, they're cheaper than you can get them on 
uh, the retailers. So if you go to like Gigaparts or something, I think they sell this for like 90 bucks. If you go directly to Digirig, they're like, 50, I think it's 50 bucks. And then you need to get um, the cables for the Yesu. Now, uh, you're only going to use one of these to connect to the 891 because you need to use the 891's um, USB into the computer and then you're going to use one of these. I forget. There's a, um, a, a diagram online that looks just like this. So here you can see you're going to take the USB out into the computer from the radio and then you're going to take this port, go into one of the ports of the DigiRig and then you're going to take the USB-C from the DigiRig and into your computer. So both the DigiRig and the SignalLink are going to hook up pretty much exactly the same way. Uh, the DigiRig is going to be the cheapest and the smallest. I am a huge fan of the DigiRig. I have uh, two of these now. I've got one dedicated for my G90 and then this one I actually have for my 817, excuse me, my 818. Um, works really well with that, and I haven't actually hooked this up to the 891 yet because I have the uh, the signal link. I just leave this in the car because the 891 is my mobile radio now. But uh, I suspect this will do everything you need the, the digi rig for your digital modes with the 891. So either one of those, that Yesu one just seems overpriced to me, probably just because it has the Yesu uh, name on it. So uh, I hope that helps you, and good luck with your tuning and digital modes. And thanks for writing in. Lastly, we have a question that I really don't know the answer for, so I want to post it here in hopes that we can all help troubleshoot. This viewer is writing, Hello, Mike. Did two POTA activations. Thanks to lots of folks, but especially inspired to get out there due to all the fun you were having. Well, thank you. That's why, that's why I do this. Uh, I noticed you write, like to run 100 watts, so I started with my uh, FTDX10 and a 20 amp hour bioeno I picked up at Hamcation. Everything worked great, but after an hour or so, the DX10 began to turn off without warning when I keyed. It would come back on after a couple seconds. Bioeno sent me a 30 and a 40 amp. I used the 40 on my second POTA and I experienced the same issue. Any ideas why I'm having trouble running 100 watts? It is obviously not insufficient power for the radio. Just hoping your experience with the ASU might bring something to mind. I have used the ground-mounted 17-foot whip and Wolf of Recoil and a 20-meter hamstick on the car, both tuned with low SWR, so not an antenna issue. So there's a few things that come to mind when I read this. And while I don't really have the greatest experience with the FTDX10. I have some. Um, I don't think it's really a rig specific thing. To me, it sounds like somewhere you're losing voltage. So I would start with what kind of charger do you have? When BioNO or really any battery company ships a battery, they're generally going to be not very charged at all. So you need to charge them fully with a lithium iron phosphate specific charger. If you just use a charger for a lead acid battery, or even if you hook it up to your power supply, the battery is not going to get fully charged. A lithium iron phosphate battery needs to charge to 14.6 volts before it is fully charged. Even 13.8 is not charged. Uh, they will sit at 13.6 volts for a long time. So I would look at what your charging voltage is first. It, like if you just took it out of the box and, and went and played radio, you're basically playing radio with an almost dead battery. So that would be the first thing I would look at. The second thing I would look at, and I'm, I don't really think this would be it, but I've seen it happen. What kind of connector are you using? Are you using Anderson power poles? If so, are those Anderson power poles, the little metal tabs inside there, are they seated firmly? I've seen these where, where people have installed these, Frank, uh, not, not properly, and the metal tabs were actually pushing out and not making good contact. I suspect this probably isn't the case uh, in your case because you are operating for about an hour successfully. Uh, and then it turned off and turned back on, but it could. Check these. Make sure when you push these in, you should hear an audible click. You shouldn't be able to. You shouldn't be able to pull these out. They should be in there because it's basically a hook that kind of 
latches over a, a little flap, so they're not going to come out. I can tell you it's not the lack of capacity or current deliverability from the batteries. I, I have uh, been using a 20 amp hour BioNO I've used for years with 100 watts. Uh, I first started off with a 10 watt lithium iron phosphate battery running 100 watts. So uh, it's not the battery. I, I would I would strongly ch uh, recommend checking your all the battery connections. That's where I would look because it sounds it's a voltage thing. When a, it, I would doubt it's RFI. I would highly doubt that. When a radio shuts off, it's a voltage thing. Your voltage is going down somewhere. So is it not uh, properly seated at the radio? Is it at your power poles or whatever type of connector you put on there? That's what you need to look at. And uh, I suspect if you go through all that with a fine tooth comb, you'll probably find the culprit. But uh, again, check your charger. And good luck. I hope you get the problem solved. Shoot me an email and let me know uh, if you've ever made any uh, 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 progress with it. I'd love to hear back from you. And that's going to wrap it up, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of Mailbag Monday. If you have a question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. You can follow me on Twitter at k8mrd. And we'll see you again on another episode of k8mrd radio stuff. 73, guys.